we do a couple of things. Number one is financial uh, planning in the sense of how do you lower your taxes overseas? It's not as simple as incorporating in the British Virgin Islands and staying where you are. You have to follow what I call my tax friendly quadrant. Your company needs to leave, you need to leave, you need to go somewhere, both you and your company. Okay, how do you do that? Where do you go? They don't have to be the same place, by the way. The company can be in one place and you can be in a different place or places. But how do you handle lowering your taxes by going offshore? We just spelled those myths. Where do you bank overseas? It may be a requirement, depending on where you're from, to move your banking out of your country. It's not generally for Americans. But if you want to diversify your money into other currencies, other countries, other banks, asset protection, things like that, that's the whole financial picture for you and your business. Then there's the picture of where you're going to live. Number one, it helps with your taxes. We want to find tax-friendly places to live. We want to find places with more freedom where they leave you alone. I believe that is available in spades outside of the West. Um, where's your second residence permit? You can get a residence permit to live somewhere. Do you need to get a second citizenship as an insurance policy against uh, what's happening in your country in case you ever need to get out? Some Americans, because the U.S. has this unique policy of worldwide taxation, you can lower your taxes overseas as an American, but you're always responsible to file. And there's always regulations and rules that are constantly changing. Some people want to get a second citizenship and just bail on the U.S. entirely to be out of that and have more freedom. And then we also talk about investing. And so we look at markets like Cambodia, Georgia, Colombia, that I think have a lot of potential. Some of them could be a rockier ride than others, but I think offer higher yields, higher appreciation, fewer regulations, lower taxes than developed markets people are investing in, whether it's real estate, stocks, bonds, um, business investments, etc. So those are the three things. And just to summarize, they can work together. A property you buy overseas to diversify your cash out of dollars into a different country, into a different currency as a, as a hedge can also help you get a second residence permit or a second passport. Living in that country, they might have a tax exemption that you can go and live. And, you know, they can all work together or they can all screw each other up.